Welcome to the Cardiology uh, Update 2017, the EHJ Today interview. Uh, my name is Christian Matter. I'm Professor of Cardiology at the University Hospital in Zurich, focusing on atherosclerosis and acute coronary syndrome. I'm also Deputy Editor at the EHJ. And I'm very happy to have a guest today, Peter Levy, who is a former chief of cardiology at the Brigham Women's Hospital in Boston, Harvard Medical School, and uh, a pioneer in the area of atherosclerosis, coronary artery disease research, and he has uh, made major contributions to inflammation atherosclerosis. We'll talk today about closing the uh, translational gap. Peter, thanks very much for joining us today. It's great uh, to be here. Uh, Breathing the, the clean air and the beautiful mountains here in, in Davos. Thank you very much. You contributed over a quarter of a century to inflammation and atherosclerosis, and we're very thrilled that at the end of this uh, walk over this uh, quarter of a century, you come to a very important closure of a gap. Why don't you sketch out a little bit uh, what you've been working on in, in terms of inflammation atherosclerosis. Well, I guess the dream of a medical scientist is to change medicine. And for that, you not only have to have the idea and do some of the fundamental work, but actually try to see it through uh, to something that will help the patient at the bedside. And it's been my great privilege uh, over uh, quite a number of decades uh, to work in my basic science laboratory on inflammation in vascular biology and atherosclerosis, and to try to push this through uh, to the bedside in the guise of clinical trials. Uh, so the story that I told in my talk up here in the opening session was about interleukin-1 beta, mm -hmm. which is a molecule that I've studied at the bench since the 1980s, actually early 1980s, and uh, taking people through a journey of my laboratory life up to the point of having the immense privilege of participating in a clinical trial which is testing a biologic therapy that targets interleukin-1-beta in patients with coronary artery disease to see if we can make a difference in outcomes. What made it particularly appealing for you? Uh, you evidently are a world expert in cytokines, inflammation, atherosclerosis. What made it so attractive to go for interleukin-1 beta? Well, you, as you well know, uh, clinical trials are an art of the possible. So we had a plausible target and we had a willing partner. Uh, Dr. Paul Ritker, who's my clinical partner, without whom we couldn't do any of this kind of yeah. clinical translation work, he and I went to Novartis uh, when we learned that they had an approved drug uh, for certain orphan diseases that are, um, involve excess interleukin-1-beta activity and proposed to them the concept of taking this into the clinic for cardiovascular disease. Beautiful. Uh, we know that interleukin-1-beta plays a major role in thrombosis, plaque formation, rupture, uh, metabolic disease, diabetes, uh, etc. So it absolutely made sense. Uh, now we're actually faced with the special situation that uh, it took quite long, uh, like 25 years, you said, to convince a company that, uh, and I know your research, uh, very convincing data. What do you think is the take of perhaps also uh, companies? Should they speed up? What could be done better? How do you interpret the timelines that it took so long? Well, I think actually more of the resistance to the idea of inflammation and atherosclerosis came from the the clinical community and the traditional epidemiologic community and perhaps the traditional lipidology community yeah. rather than industry. Industry is always eager to hear an idea and weigh the uh, potential benefits for their, their products. Uh, so I have to say that, uh, that Novartis was in incredibly uh, receptive when we proposed okay. this to them. Yeah. There, there wasn't a delay. They wanted, of course, to see the, uh, f some phase two data. We collaborated with them on generating some phase two feasibility, feasibility data before going into the clinical trial. But I think uh, when, when I started working on inflammation 
in vascular biology and atherosclerosis, uh, it was a controversial idea. When Paul Ricker started working on biomarkers of inflammation as clinical tools in cardiovascular medicine, he met with a lot of resistance, as you, as you may recall. So I think that more of the resistance came from the clinical community than from industry. But I think that one of the reasons that we focused on interleukin-1-beta was uh, work not done by my laboratory, but done by the group of Eichelatz and uh, work done by Petri Kovanen's group at Wuhuri Institute in, in Helsinki. Mm -hmm. And these groups simultaneously and independently discovered that cholesterol crystals can activate a supramolecular structure in cells known as the inflammasome. And the inflammasome, when activated by two signals, one of which can be cholesterol crystals, mm -hmm. can convert pro-interleukin-1-beta, which is not biologically active, to the active form. And so it was a perfect storm. Inside the atherosclerotic plaque, you have the cholesterol crystals. Uh, we know that you have the precursor of active interleukin-1-beta. And so we have the machinery right inside the plaque that can generate the active cytokine that has all of those potentially pro-atherogenic and uh, pro-thrombotic properties that you mentioned. Okay, very, very interesting. Uh, can you tell us about the timelines we can expect with this CONTOS uh, trial? You're leading with Paul Ritger, size and expected uh, outcome. So, uh, CANTOS is our phase three trial uh, that uh, is looking at three different doses of a monoclonal antibody that selectively neutralizes human interleukin-1 beta. We're studying patients with established coronary artery disease, but in the stable phase of the disease, at least 30 days after myocardial infarction. And we're studying people who have a biomarker of persistent inflammation, even when on a full palate of our standard of care. So that would be survivors of myocardial infarction on aspirin, beta blocker, ACE inhibitor or angiotensin receptor blocker, yeah. uh, and uh, the maximum intensity statin that they can tolerate or that is used in their community. We're doing the trial in uh, almost 40 countries, over, well over 30 countries. And uh, we're then enrolling people that have a C-reactive protein measured with a high sensitivity assay, an HSCRP greater than two milligrams per liter. So that's just above the median. And we know that the statins bring down the C-reactive protein. Uh, so these are people who are inflamed even on a high dose of statin. And so we have randomized them to uh, one of three doses of canakinumab or placebo. And actually, uh, we are in the phase of washout, uh, having accrued about 1,400 events. Uh, one of the very important uh, secondary endpoints in the CANTOS trial is the delay in conversion or uh, in stopping the uh, conversion of impaired fasting glucose to diabetes mellitus because yeah. we know that interleukin-1 beta is implicated in insulitis and in uh, beta cell dysfunction. Right. Uh, so in order to test the durability of any delay in progression of uh, IFG to diabetes mellitus, uh, we need to do a six-month washout. So. Uh, we expect, that we're now in 2017, we expect to be able to present the results of the trial, uh, which of course I don't know, yeah, <laughs> which yeah, we yeah. haven't, haven't yeah. determined yet, um, this year, perhaps uh, at the European Society of Cardiology meeting uh, in the end of August or early September in Barcelona. So uh, stay tuned. Um, yeah. I would say that, uh, you know, interleukin-1 beta, it's the art of the possible. We have very good plausibility based on work from many laboratories, including my own. And we have the willing partner of Novartis who uh, deserves a great deal of credit for having uh, funded and helped us see through this investigator-initiated large-scale clinical trial. Uh, but there are many potential targets in yeah. inflammation and uh, we're only targeting one, so it's a risky business. So actually that may be another lesson is that to cross that translational gap you need to be able to uh, actually put your hypothesis to the acid test. 
and that's risky. Check the safety parameters, uh, of course, too, as you do. And I think that definitely is important uh, for being on a safe path, uh, checking both efficacy and safety. Because if you uh, target host defenses too well, yeah. you, you might have uh, infections, and we expect to see an infection signal from what we know about uh, canakinumab. And uh, you might also have an effect on, on uh, tumor surveillance. So certainly it's also, it was a very good idea of you and Paul Ritger not to go for an ACS where the inflammatory component is perhaps very strong to go the safe path first and then go afterwards to the ACS. Well, yeah. that's, that's right, because we're going to have many hundreds of ACS events among our 1,400 okay. events. And yeah. so we now will have laid the base for uh, the safety of giving canakinumab and interrupting IL-1 beta signaling during the acute phase of myocardial infarction. And in the meantime, with my colleagues and collaborators, uh, Matthias Narendorf and Philip Sierski, we've done some preclinical work uh, in experimental myocardial infarction that I think lays the basis for a potential CANTOS-2, which would be exactly the ACS patients. If you uh as a key message for our uh, viewers and listeners, uh, wrap up in uh, three sentences the uh, achievements you have done with CONTOS and inflammation atherosclerosis. Well, the, the first thing is that if you believe in, in your work, you have to persist despite skepticism and that it yeah. requires patience and perseverance. And then ultimately, I think some courage to put your cherished hypothesis to the, to the test because, uh, you know, we could uh, come up with a null trial. We'll learn a great deal from it no matter what, uh, as with all trials. But, uh, you know, uh, Paul Ritker and I have been in, in this situation before with other trials yeah. where we don't know the outcome, but you put your hypothesis on the line. And, you know, if it uh, comes up a null, you learn what you can and move on to the next goal. So you need to have perseverance and courage and then and go where the data the takes you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and of course it does require a, par a partnership with all of the safeguards yeah. for intellectual property and publication rights and, and uh, ethical concerns, but a partnership between industry and the uh, biomedical community mm -hmm. is absolutely essential to move the field forward and to pave new ground. You know, there have been hundreds of lipid lowering trials. There have been hundreds of antihypertensive mm -hmm. trials. There have been hundreds of antithrombotic trials. Cantos is the first uh, large scale, double blind, placebo controlled, randomized trial that is testing an anti inflammatory. A new concept. Yeah. yeah. And you were definitely a stellar team to uh, test that. Thank you very much, Peter, for uh, sharing your insight about this exciting avenue uh, with us. And uh, yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much.